Hello, uh, John Connell here. I'm here as part of the West Cork Literary Festival's Advent Calendar, and I'm going to be reading from my new book, The Running Book. It's a follow-up to, to The Cow Book, and um, I hope you'll enjoy it. So I'm going to read the first chapter. Prologue, Undiscovered Lands. I've never run this far before. I'm 30, and this is all new to me. I'm running now as though everything depends on it, and in so many ways it does. This run, this voyage, is in ways the climax of a journey into the country of the self, the final destination after a year of travel. I'm thinking of all this, but really I'm just putting one foot in front of the other and willing myself on, hoping to keep going, because I've quit at so many things in my life, ran away from problems and people. But right now, this run is a way to make amends for all that. It might sound like magical thinking, and maybe in some way it is. All actions start in dreams and thoughts, and I've long held on to this one. I'm in a local forest of Derry Casson in rural Longford. It has snowed, and between the melting snows and puddles of water, I race now. My feet are wet, but I do not mind. My lungs are strong and firm, and I know and feel that at this pace I can continue for a long time. An hour more, two hours more, I am not sure. This is an undiscovered country. A man once said to me, you get to know yourself on a long run. In the end, they surmised, you realise you're a lot st stronger than you think and a lot more stubborn. Those words are haunting me now. They are every one of them true. Running and farming are two things I understand, two tangible things. With each passing day, progress is made. The cultivation of a crop or cow is like the tending of the garden of the self. Not much happens in a week. But in the culmination of weeks and months, real progress is made, real goals achieved. Everything starts in dreams and thoughts, the building of a farm, the building of a body, the writing of a book. We are, I think, in a way, the heirs of our dreams. The sweat on my face has dried and turned to salt, and when I lick my lips, I can taste it. It has been several hours since I have drank water. At times, a craving comes to me for it, and then, like a lustful urge, it leaves again. I tell myself that soon, soon I will stop and give in. There is a river and a lake beside me, beside this old forest. Perhaps when all this is over, I will jump in, quench and cool myself. I'll cup my hands and drink the water from the fresh lake and clean like the old people did in the long ago. I am not the greatest runner, but I have in me the discipline of an athlete. Running and exercise have given me a control of my life, a real foundation on which to build. And from that, the new man that I have become has been forged. They say running is a lonely thing, but out there on the roads, on the road of life, I have never felt more alive, more connected to the moment. In the forest, the path winds and courses through steep hills and bends. I have names for some of them, secret, silly names to help me surmount and overcome them. The gravel is loose underneath my feet as I beat out my weary rhythm. I am alone here today. There is only the forest, the lake and me. At Switzerland Bend, I feel the glee of the flat ground return. The huge pine tree around me and I imagine myself in some Scandinavian place, some Vanhalla of nature, some distant land. I hear the lake waters lap and fold onto themselves. I know that soon the hills of the forest will be upon me and I will have to strain and push myself forward. I have been running for 25 kilometers now and with each passing lap I urge myself forward. There are jobs to be done at home, cattle that need to be cleaned out, fade to be given. My phone does not work here. And while I run in this place, I am not contactable. I like it that way. It is just the road and me. My headphones beat out a steady rhythm of 70s pop and easy rock music that keeps me happy and motivated. Alone here now, I shout out the word of blue suede's hooked on a feeling. There, is a there was a time I couldn't sing anymore, that I had not the joy of life. But these words, as my actions now do too, remind me that there is much joy in the world, joy amidst the darkness. The snows have turned to slush as I round the corner and hit the 30 kilometre mark. I am hot and remove my jumper, throwing it on top of a nearby bush. I must be careful now not to ensure I do not catch cold when I finish. The day is cold, but I am hot and alive. And I think now of all those who run with me, of the ancients, of Murakami, of the Olympians. When I was a boy, I loved to run, but as a student, I put that aside, thinking the life of the mind to be an immobile one. In the last two years after everything, I have come to see that the intellectual life, as Seneca said, is interlinked, that true happiness is found in the present moment, and that physical labour and thought are the same. 
My feet are the extension of my thoughts and it is intellectual will that gets me around this course, not just mere physical fitness. At 34 kilometers, I hit the wall. I am in the land of the new, the place beyond the pines. I have never run this far before, but I have the will in me to continue. I have every will, but my body is beginning to tire. My foot pains have returned. I can feel a buildup of lactic acid in my shoulder and my calf muscle is beginning to ache. I run on for another kilometer, ignoring my failing engine. I do not know the rules of this country, its customs. Perhaps in the land of the 35 kilometers, there is only pain and ignorance. Perhaps it is a corroboree of effort and sweat culminating in the discovery of the dream time of the self. In my mind, I think of all the places I have been, all the journeys I have undertaken. This run is a part of that story. I will remember it in the list of great days I have had on this earth. A man gets to know himself on the road, and in me I have found a multitude of heroes, a conflict of nations, of language, of faith. In the recess of the past, I see my grandfather on the run, fighting in the War of Independence in his flying column, moving from safe house to safe house. It was only weeks ago that my father told me he had been captured and imprisoned in that time. What would he make of me now, his namesake running in a forest for no other reason than life itself? By the water's lapping edge, I imagine the older people too, the Celts who once ruled this place. They are all of them in me and I in them. A landlord once owned all this, this lake, this forest. I am running on colonised land, running as a post-colonial man, whatever that is. I think now I must be getting delirious, and perhaps I am. Myrtleize him, rock! I shout out aloud, uttering my old Rocky movie mantra to snap me back into the present. My feet are tired, my body sore, and the Italian stallion urns me on in my mind, asking for just one more step. At the last turn I near the end of my race, it has been four hours or more. I carry my wounded body across my imaginary line. There are no waiting crowds, no cheering lover, no landlords or IRA men. It is just me and the forest and the cold winter's day in rural Ireland. I slow to a walk, stumbling towards the grass of nearby Mullignacta Gaelic football pitch. I hunker down to catch my breath. I am 30. I have never ran this far. I have never felt so alive. That's my reading. Happy Christmas to everybody.